And we are back between two yetis with Greg Jones and Christy Yacht Insurance. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, and yourself? Actually, I just read that. You're not Christy Yacht Insurance, risk, insurance and fire man risk management, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? We well, we do more than just uh, boat insurance. Okay. That's, that's the main focus of our business, the yacht insurance, but we do other things as well. What does the risk management involve? I think we were just discussing about how you also do help owners when they get insurance, get everything else set up, right? Well, we kind of give them some advice, yes, if they're new, uh, new to the industry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And how's the boat show been for you? We're on day oh, four right now, uh, on the Viking booth, as we probably should have said at the yeah. start. Mm -hmm. But uh, how's the show been? Lots of boats being sold? Yeah, very good. Very good. The traffic's been exceptionally well, mm -hmm. um, especially here in the Viking booth. It's been very heavy traffic. Um, a few boats have sold. Um, the 92, kind of their flagship sport fish boat, Absolutely. Uh, just sold in the last half hour here. Yeah, we heard everyone clapping on that. Yeah, that they're was clapping. Very, very good. So that was, uh, that's obviously a very positive thing. Yeah. Um, so that in itself uh, makes it a good day there. Absolutely, and the uh, Christian Yacht Insurance, how long have you guys been around? I mean, and your main priority is these type of boats, right? Yes, yes, we kind of specialize, we do all types of boats, but more or less specialize in sport fishing boats. Okay. And we have a very good relationship with Viking and the Viking dealers and mm -hmm. dealer network and things. So um, we try to raise as many Vikings as we can. It's a nice quality, quality boat. Beautiful and, boat. Um, yeah, so. It uh, directly relates to, you know, you don't get a whole lot of claims to typically with these boats because it's uh, a knowledgeable owner, and most of them have captains, mm -hmm. and it's uh, people that have been boating most of their lives. What type of claims do you normally see? Obviously, we just had the hurricane come through a few weeks ago. Was yeah. that a busy time for you guys? It was busy, but um, luckily we did, we got uh, escaped with not too many claims. Okay. Uh, some little stuff, um, haul outs. Um, most insurance companies will pay to have your boat hauled out in the event of a hurricane, reimburse you, or at least share the cost with you. Okay. So uh, that was a lot of our, our uh, busyness was uh, taking those phone calls and emails and things and submitting them to the companies and getting people reimbursed for actually taking care of their own boats. Interesting. But, Did you have many boats sink or anything or no, catastrophic no, damage? No, no, no total losses for us. Um, very fortunate. But uh, we got very lucky too, the way the storm turned at the last minute and mm -hmm. kind of went more toward the west coast of Florida. So the east coast would have came a little closer here. I think we would have had a little more. A little more damage. A little more damage. But uh, <laughs> overall, we made out very, very well. Interesting. So, we were just talking about do you ever get novice owners coming on the booth, buying a boat, and then you have to get involved in the insurance? Because yeah, you have we, to give them an education, right? Right, yes. Um, that doesn't happen that often, but it does mm -hmm. happen. And, you know, somebody maybe comes into some money or has worked all their life and retired, said, I just want to go buy a boat and never owned a boat before in their life. And all of a sudden they want to buy a 70-foot Viking, an $8 million boat, and yep. drive it themselves. Like, whoa, slow down, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have a licensed captain, you know, mm -hmm. that he has to have experience as well, not just a license, we need to see his resume and that he's worked on similar size boats and not had issues and claims history. They ask not only the owner about claims history, but also their captain too, if they've ever been involved in, you know, marine insurance claims or losses. Now, would you ever reject a captain for that or the premium Certainly. just be higher? Certainly, no. I mean, we personally don't, we're an agent, mm -hmm. but we send it out to various different companies, but companies definitely, you know, do not approve just every captain that comes along, just because they have a license, they don't get approved. Are you a boater yourself? Yeah, yeah. What do you, yeah. anything you specialize in, like center consoles or boats like this? Or? No, I, I mean, insurance, professionally wise, we specialize more in sport fishing type boats. But your like, boat, do you have one yourself yes, this I, kind of size? Or? No, I wish I could have one on this kind of size. <laughs> but uh, no, I have a 31 foot center console boat. And it's perfect for us and the family. We do more just cruising, going mm -hmm. to sandbar, and uh, just kind of inshore fishing more or less. We don't go far, don't go to the Bahamas or anything like that. So but did you grow up? Our needs. Did you grow up with boats? I did. I did. I did. My family grew up uh, actually on the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. Very nice. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I was on a boat since probably before I could walk. Interesting. And uh, just kind of grew up through the years on boats and. Um, because that's what I kind of like. I've got a, I've got a three-year-old. I kind of want to get him into boating, but the mm -hmm. wife's not too keen, so I've really got to try. And oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I was young, my, my parents had a harness on me with a, with a, uh, a hook a, in the a back. tether, yes. So uh, and it would let me go, you know, maybe a foot from the edge of the boat, and that was it. Um, and up there, it was probably sailing boats then, right? More no, it was more cruising boats on the okay. Chesapeake, mm -hmm. power boats. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. So if someone buys a boat at the show, how do they get in touch with you to get it insured? Well, they give me a call at 561-252-6696. You can put that up on the screen. <laughs> okay, cool. And website, what do you have? Um, Is it just christyinsurance.com? Christy, yes, christyinsurance.com. And uh, maybe uh, 
can put that up on the, oh, the yeah. website, maybe. Absolutely, we'll definitely do that. Oh, you're in Riviera Beach, so mm -hmm. right near the factory, right? Yep, yep, right What's at it? the uh, Viking uh, Service Center in I Riviera have, Beach. I have heard that's starting to become a lot more developed now. Yeah, they, they, just, have some they issues, just, right? just did a big um, expansion there at the yard mm -hmm. in, uh, in Riviera Beach. Uh, it's twice the size of what it was. Mm -hmm. But yes, the whole downtown Riviera Beach is being redeveloped. Um, because I, I used to go there two or three times a week and there was always someone getting arrested. Yeah, oh, well, that the... hasn't changed a whole lot. <laughs> but uh, the Riviera Beach Marina was fairly run down and that yep. didn't really seem like a real safe place to be. They totally redid that. It's real nice now. Oh, very cool. Um, you walk around the docks with your family and feel safe and secure and things where, you know, seven, eight years ago you couldn't. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Progress. So, That's yeah. what we like. Is that yeah. what we call Trump's America? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Let's anyway. make America great again. <laughs> I like it. Are you a Trump supporter? I am. We're not going to get political. We can cut this bit out. But right. uh, you are a Trump supporter. I am. It's funny. I was talking to some police officers on the booth because I offered them water because it's so hot outside. And I was like, do you guys like Trump? And they were like, what are you? I was like, Trump? Yeah, he's cool. And I'm like, yeah, we like him. As police in general, yes, we're I think big, they do. big supporters. I think they do. And they said the atmosphere from this show this year as versus last year and the year before, a couple of years ago, people were like, what are you doing here? Right. This year, people are stopping them. them and saying, thank you for your service. Right. And that, to me, is America. Yeah. How awesome America can be. Yeah, they have, they've had the Coast Guard walking around the boat show a lot. Yep. Big armed, you know, uh, I don't know, lack of a better term, of flak jackets and yeah, stuff yeah. and heavy equipment. And it's, and it's people out here. Are, and people are stopping them and thanking them and thanks for your service and everything. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's encouraging. Is what this it is, is definitely yeah. a pro-Republican crowd at the show. Certainly, say? certainly, I would think. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to say that you know the Republicans have the everything money. right, or anything <laughs> everything like that. right. But uh, <laughs> yeah. most of the people are uh, they can afford these type of boats are business owners mm -hmm. um, or you know CEOs of large companies mm -hmm. and they're you know corporate America. You might actually be the perfect person to ask, but since the election happened last year, have you seen a meteoric rise? in the output of boats being sold? Oh, definitely, without a doubt. Yeah? yeah. Was it like immediately following the show? It was It was soon after. Yep. Interesting. Very soon. Cool. Yeah, but everybody's attitude is just much better. Yeah. I mean, a couple years ago, there'd still be crowds at the show, and you'd have Saturdays and Sundays are always busy days, mm -hmm. family days we call them, with kids and strollers and everything. But, you know, it's just, for a lack of better terminology, tire kickers, people just look in and yeah. not really, not even, qualified to buy the boat they're just looking because oh that's a nice looking boat that's pretty now there's a lot of qualified people that can actually afford these boats and mm -hmm. are interested in, and they're talking about wanting to buy them and they might not buy it here at the show but it might be six months or eight months down the road or a year when they get their finances in order or what have you mm -hmm. and they'll um, they'll eventually buy a boat fantastic no it's been uh, let's see 99 um, almost 20 years but I um, I was working as a, a boat captain for my father on his boat for a while. And that's where I met Eric McDowell, who's currently my boss. Mm -hmm. And he- uh, Any relation to Drew McDowell? Yes, Drew's From brother. From Palm Beach Towers? Yes, okay. that's Drew's brother, Eric. He's one of the owners of Christie Insurance. And uh, so I met him through the boating end of it. And then when I decided to get married, Besides so being a boat captain wasn't any good, any, you know, mm -hmm. good for my marriage. Yeah, <laughs> usually it's not. So I needed a job. For many reasons. Right, needed a job. <laughs> Went to work for my father. So Eric called and uh, he said, "Hey, we insure your dad's boat now, and we'd like to insure his business." Oh, okay. And I said, "Well, it's not a real good time. The business is going through an acquisition right now, being bought and everything." He goes, "Oh well, let me uh, after the acquisition's over, you know, I want to talk about it." He says, "But." What are you going to do through the acquisition? I said, well, I'm going to stay here. They offered me this basically the same job and got it fairly well. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at. And I was just totally kidding around. I said, why are you uh, looking for somebody to sell insurance? He said, uh, well, as a matter of fact, we're looking for somebody to open an office in Florida. Huh. Me and the wife had been talking about maybe moving back to Florida, but we were talking like long-term plans, four yeah. or five years down the road, not four or five months. Mm -hmm. But uh, I said, why? Well, I said, well, I know nothing about insurance. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, but you know everything about boats. Mm -hmm. And he said, you can take somebody that knows about boats and teach them insurance. Yeah. He said, you cannot take somebody that knows insurance and teach them about boats. Absolutely. Because it's just, it is kind of. You have to grow up with it, don't you? Almost. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to. It's experience, though, It's right? very much experience, right. It's just little nuances and just see how things have developed over the years. And mm -hmm. But um, we tried on a couple different occasions. The guy who was with 
Allstate for 18 years came to work for us. Didn't know the difference between you know a Bayliner or a Viking. Which is a and problem. It, that's a problem. Yeah. And when a guy calls you and says he's got a, a Viking and you don't know and you ask him if he has, okay, he's got a 70 foot Viking. Well, does that have outboards? You know, questions like that. You just, yeah, the phone. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Like, what is this guy I'm talking to? Yeah. So, and, and believe it or not, some of these guys that do call uh, some other companies, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but some of the national brands you know of that auto, like auto insurance guys and oh, yes. stuff like that. Like so Geico, call, Wall State, those Yes, kind of exactly. Well, um, they may get that question. Oh, does that have outboards? Mm. Or is that gasoline? Or, you know. And in fact, you're quite right. When I, I bought a 23-foot Rebalo and I tried to get insurance and I called Allstate, and, you know, because it's a smaller boat, I didn't want to bother the likes of you guys. So uh, I'll right. call you guys next time. Right. <laughs> Certainly. Oh, dear. Well, we are between two yetis. Greg, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.